Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to day 39 of Lent, the day before Palm Sunday. And we're doing this one live, actually. Usually I record them when I get up around 5, 5.30, and then just set them up to appear as live. But uh, well, it's not so much I slept in. It's more my boys prevented me from recording this. <laughs> so we're just doing this live, which is a little unfortunate because... Uh, they're usually, as I do record these, I usually do have to edit a few mispronounced words out or when I record, I'm able to pause and and whatever. So uh, you'll just have to bear with any mistakes that I make. I apologize. But, you know, any morning that you can start with a cigar and coffee is a pretty decent morning. So I'm not going to complain too much. Okay. So, like I said, tomorrow is Palm Sunday start of holy week so let's get going on our meditation which if you're new to this which i doubt any of you are or if there is it's one or two people we're doing meditations um from bishop jacques bossuet from meditations for lent the book is from sophia institute press i'm gonna throw up an image on screen so you can't see me as i struggle to pronounce certain words uh that way there's nothing for you to look at you just listen you just meditate and let's get going. So here we go. Okay. Day 39. Saturday of the fifth week of Lent. A sign of contradiction. The holy prophet Simeon spoke truly when he told the Blessed Virgin, This child is set for the fall and for the resurrection of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be contradicted that out of many hearts thoughts may be revealed. Luke chapter 2, verses 34 through 35. At that moment, the profound malice of the human heart had not yet been seen, nor the extent to which it is capable of resisting God. It should not astonish us that many believed in Jesus after the raising of Lazarus. The miracle had taken place in full view at the very door of Jerusalem, with the crowd that the morning of a family of good standing normally attracts. Many of the Jews, therefore, believed in him. John eleven forty five. It was the foreseeable effect of so great a miracle. But others, knowing that the chief priests and the Pharisees hated Jesus, went to tell them of what they had seen. Upon hearing the news, a council was assembled and came to a strange determination. This man performs many signs. They did not deny the fact, for it was too well attested. What are we to do? John 11.47 The response would seem plain, to believe in him. But their avarice, false zeal, hypocrisy, ambition, and tyranny over consciences, fault with which Jesus revealed, even though they were hidden un under the mask of piety. These faults blinded them. In this condition, they could not believe. John twelve thirty nine. They would rather resist God than renounce their power. Later, they would say of the disciples, What shall we do with these men? For, a note, for that a notable sign has been performed through them is manifest to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Acts 4, 16. The natural response would have been, we must believe in it. But if we believe in it, we will lose our standing. This they could not resolve to do. The incredulous among us ask, how, how was it that the whole world did not believe in him if he worked so many great miracles? They do not understand the profound attachment of the human heart. Oh, hold on. One of the boys is coming in, which is another reason I like to record these. Uh, give me a second here, everyone. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. 
this is why I like to record them earlier. Um, let's see. Okay, so later they would say of the disciples, what shall we do with these men? For that notable sign has been performed through them, is manifest to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Acts 4.16 The natural response would have been, we must believe in it. But if we believe in it, we will lose our standing. This they could not resolve to do. The incredulous among us ask, how was it that the whole world did not believe in him if he worked so many great miracles? They do not understand the profound attachment of the human heart to its senses, which brings a prodigious indifference to salvation. These attachments cause us to be complacent, to ignore things that pertain to our salvation, and to deafen ourselves to the claims of those that we do see, for fear of the consequences of belief. We fear having to renounce all that we love and embrace a life that seems so unbearable and sad. In order to change the evil dispositions of our hearts, there must be internal miracles in addition to external ones. This is what grace achieves. There ought to be nothing easier than to discover the truth. But only a relatively small number of men desired the truth and their salvation enough to inquire into the things happening in Judea and to reflect upon them freely, that is, without attachment to their senses. What is the more astonishing is that these men who did not see the will of God and the miracles that had so evidently declared it were, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> these men who did not see the will of God in the miracles that had so evidently declared it were held to be wise, the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees. Yet they were hypocrites who employed the name of God to mislead the world. They were proud, grasping men who made religion serve their interests. They were, therefore, opposed to the truth and incapable of accepting it. This is why Simeon said that by Christ the thoughts, <clears throat> the thoughts out of many hearts would be revealed. Luke 2.35 Many would choose to follow those who appeared to be wise and who enjoyed high standing rather than to follow God and the truth. Far from profiting from the miracle of the resurrection of Lazarus, they resolved to kill not only Jesus, but Lazarus as well. John 11.53 and 12.10 Too many people were going to see him. His witness against them was too strong. They thought they would be able to hide the miracle of his being raised by showing that the Savior had not been able to keep him alive for long. They planned to kill him as if they could thereby tie God's hands. The blindness of the Jews is not so different from that of unbelievers today. The effort of self-mastery that must be made in order to give ourselves fully to the truth and to God is so great that many prefer to stifle the grace and inspiration that would lead them to make it. Many, that is, prefer blindness to sight. We are also among those to whom Jesus Christ is a sign of contradiction. One of the revelations of Christ's coming is the tremendous, tremendous insensibility of those raised in the faith and surrounded by its light, who nevertheless prefer their senses in the enchantment of pleasure to the truth that shines in their heart. Okay, there we go. Sorry for the delay. <clears throat> Sorry for any mistakes. Uh, but there we are for today, so... Tomorrow is Palm Sunday um, and the start of Holy Week. So obviously we don't fast on Sundays. Uh, still abstain from meat or whatever else you're abstaining from. You know, still do our Lenten penances, but don't fast tomorrow. Um, but then Holy Week, uh, kick it up a notch, kick it up, do something extra. Whether that's more fasting, um, more penance, more prayer, uh, do all of it, honestly. But, um, but yeah, so Holy Week is, Holy Week is right around the corner. So anyways, thank you all. Once again, I apologize for the delay, but I hope you have a, a great day and I'll see you all again tomorrow morning, but hopefully as a recording and not live. So. <laughs>